Hi, and welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name is Jenny Sinaparatna. Grab your favorite drink and a snack, and we will get started. Today, I have apple green tea and some walnuts. I'm kind of obsessed with walnuts right now, so woohoo! All right, let's get real. So, I am one of those kind of nerdy moms. Like, okay, not kind of nerdy, really just kind of drive my, my poor little daughter crazy. So, every year since she was probably four, six I have done something in our home that has our thankful for the year so I get some kind of I think the first year I had like a a pot that was shaped like a pumpkin and everybody had to write down what they were thankful for and so every single year I get an item and I have everybody has to fill in so many pieces of what they are thankful for for the specific year that we're in and it first it was like friends family church okay that's great we're all thankful for that what are you specifically thankful for what God has done this year and so I actually last year took it a step further for myself and I put together a mug now it's a black and white checked mug and it's just really my thing I absolutely love it and I think I even might have done a podcast on it last year and I wrote all the things that I love in it And this year I went to go find my item, right? I was like, what am I going to do? I want to do something a little bit different because it kind of gets to the point that you're like, have I done that before? We've been doing this a couple years, right? And I want unique things that are different. And I found something and I started like, okay, so what am I going to put on it for myself? And what am I, what am I working through? And what am I thankful for? And so you kind of start thinking about the year. And so then I went to my word for the year, which is thrive. Um, That is my word for the year. And I was like, thrive. And I have to be honest with you, that day and almost every day since that day, I've been thinking about the word thrive and how I'm like, have I failed this year? I don't know that I've thrived. I don't know that I am like living my best life. Um, <laughs> I It has been a really, really hard year in many different ways for me personally. Um, and so I was like, Lord, I failed. Like I haven't been thriving. I've kind of been surviving. I found myself, you know, at the end of the day going, whoo, I made it through. Not, whoo, look what I did today. You know, And so I was just kind of beating myself up as I was working through these things to be thankful for. And now, do I have a thousand things to be thankful for? Yes, I really do. Like, God is so gracious. And of course, when you start thinking in detail, you realize even what I like to do is go through my pictures for the year. You know, you go, I save all mine on Google Photos. And I put in 2022 and I see everything that, because I take pictures of everything. Um... (laughs) It's kind of crazy how much I take pictures. And so I'm taking pictures and I see all the things that God has supplied and that he's done and that I'm thankful for. But I had to really take some time and go, Lord, I'm not thriving right now. I am struggling and I don't know why. Right. I do know why. Of course, the circumstances in my life are not perfect. Right. Um, There are many things that are pulling me in several different directions and you spend the you get you spend the day you get through it you come home you cry um and you go lord i I, I didn't i didn't do my best today and i wanted to come on today and just talk a little bit about moses because i'm reading exodus right now (laughs) i know maybe not the best book to read when you're kind of in a Um, bad season of life. But I'm reading through Exodus and I'm loving the very beginning. Now, I mean, I'm a slow reader. It takes me a long time. Sometimes I go over the chapter two or three times just to kind of get what it's saying. So I'm in the first, I don't know, 10 chapters of Exodus. And when you look at Moses's life, he really has a very unique life. Like he is taken into, he's put in a, a, a little raft. I don't It's not a raft. They say it's like a weed basket or whatever. And found by the princess, raised in Pharaoh's courts, and then commits murder, runs away, f- becomes a sheep farmer, has God talk to him, goes back to Egypt to free the, Ill- the 
Israelites. Oh my goodness, it's been a long day. Israelites. And so this is whole thing. And what you hear that comes out of Moses's mouth, when you think of Moses, you think of the Ten Commandments, right? Or the Red Sea. Like those are the, when people talk about Moses, I'm like, yeah, he's the guy that walked up to the Red Sea and it split in half. Like, yeah, I want to be that person, obviously. Um, he's the guy that went up to the up the mountain and got the Ten Commandments, talked to God and, you know, had to go back up and get another one because he was angry when he came back. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But when you hear him at the beginning, he is full of excuses, right? He is full of, I am not articulate. I'm a bumbling buffoon. You don't want me doing this. You probably should talk to somebody else. Like he is in the presence of a burning bush and they talk about this is holy ground right now. And he is coming up with excuses. (laughs) And honestly, I was like, oh, wow, I am a little like Moses. This is great. I was super encouraged. And maybe you're like, Jenny, that is weird. And maybe it is. But I went, like God used Moses in so many mighty, mighty ways that there were days that he was thriving. There were days that he was in the courts of Pharaoh. There were days when he, when the Red Sea split in half and all of the Israelites were saved. There were days that manna came And I mean, there were so many miracles that happened in his life and a lot of them through things that God did through him. And then there were the moments that he said, God, you can't use me. And for me, that was such an, it has been such an encouragement because I'm going to have days that are, Lord, why are you using, like, I'm like, do I even do a podcast? You know, what's the point? I have nothing really important to say. Or Lord, you know, I really am not equipped for ministry. I mean, you know, those things that you're saying to yourself, you know, the things that you're like, I'm not thriving right now, Jenny, I'm barely surviving. And I want to say to you that when you look through the Bible, you see lots of people that do not do this on their own steam. They are not thriving. They are not doing great things for God because of themselves. And that is what God has reminded me of, that I am not doing, I'm not thriving because of my circumstances. I am not thriving because of what I have done or my accomplishments. I am only thriving because I'm following God day by day. That is is what thriving has meant to me. It is at the end of the day going, Lord, I don't feel like I thrive today, but I want to follow what you have for me. Do you have anything else? And I want to take that moment and go, Lord, I need you. And honestly, did I accomplish a lot that day other than some tears and some frustration? And maybe I made dinner. Like in some days it doesn't even happen. (laughs) But my attitude of going back to God and saying, Lord, I want to thrive for you. I want to continue to grow and be the vessel that you've made me to be, whether that's for my family or in ministry or at work or at the grocery store. I want to be a vessel that people see your light. That is my goal. And whether I feel like I'm thriving or not, or I feel like I'm just surviving, Really, for me, it is about those intimate moments. And that is why I'm thriving. And I'm here to say I'm thriving because I am his light. And I can have a smile on my face. And I can know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not necessarily the happiness. And not necessarily that everything is perfect. That is not what that means. It really isn't because there's so many times in life that it's so heavy and dark and sad. Like it just is. It's sad. Life can be so sad. Oh, But the joy of the Lord is my strength. I do. I need to know from day to day that it is not about my circumstances. It is not about um, what I've accomplished sometimes. It is all about his strength and his joy and him providing and that you watch Moses and he's like he loses his temper and he does things throughout the uh, out the entire book that you're like oh wow like stay away from him you know (laughs) 
you know, and he gets so frustrated when they're doing the plagues. You know, I love that's always been something I've kind of been obsessed with is all the plagues that happened to Egypt during that time and how I would have been like, this is such a bad plan. God, this is a bad plan. This is not going to work. This is a bad plan, you know, and God's going, but I have a plan. You just don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to you. This is not making any sense to you at all, but I have a plan and trust me, it's going to work. And right now in your life, you may feel like you're going through the plagues. And I want you to know that God is saying, I have a plan. And he sees the end result and he knows what he's doing. And the joy of the Lord can be your strength. The peace that passes all understanding is something that is so, feels so far away sometimes. Like, Lord, I need your peace because there is no peace in the circumstances and the chaos in my life. There is no peace. But God can bring it in the middle of where you are. He can come into your workplace or your home with toddlers and he can bring you peace that passes our understanding because it's him. And so I just want you this week in the middle of our sad lives. And I don't mean like we don't have great lives. I mean, there's just sadness in life or frustration or even anger at work and at home and at church. I mean, at the grocery store, like, you know, me at Walmart, here we are in those moments that we say, Lord, I want to thrive here. I want you to be the joy that is my strength. And I want you to be the peace that passes all my understanding. Because right now my understanding is not peace. And I want you to step into those moments. And that, my friends, is when you really thrive. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I pray that you find... Um, some great moments of peace and joy in the Lord this week. You can find me at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram and on Facebook. I would love you to come on and be part of the team there. You can also find all my information on ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. Go on and review this podcast, share this podcast. Like, let's go big. We are finally in all 50 states. Woohoo! And over 50 countries. So I appreciate you listening, sharing, and all of your comments. Thank you so much. And I just know that God's got some joy and peace for you this week, even in the midst of the chaos of your life. God bless.